This episode is brought to you by Ronzoni and Blue Ribbon, available at all local stores. Welcome back to Chef It Up, everyone. I'm your host, Ayanthea Smith, and I am super excited to be here for a new season of this very delicious show. We are in the IL TV studios, and today we're making tomato pumpkin bisque with kunk. Let's eat. <laughs> I hope you guys are ready to cook today. With me in the kitchen is Chef Donaldo Bain. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, you're welcome. And a welcome to Chef It Up. You guys, let's learn more about Donaldo. Hi, I'm Chef Donaldo, and you're watching Chef It Up. I've been a chef around the Bahamas for over 15 years. Today I work as a personal chef, providing food services for both individuals and businesses. Visit me at www.foodu.today. So we're whipping up a tomato pumpkin bisque with conch. Where did you come with this recipe? Well, um, I love French cooking, so Ooh, being oui, oui. yes, we oui, we oui, mademoiselle. <laughs> so um, a bisque is a French originated dish. So what usually a bisque is something like shellfish. It's a soup. Shellfish is usually the base. It's a thick soup. There's many different recipes for bisque, so mm -hmm. the one that I'm using, a lot of people might not have seen this recipe before. I went back and tried to make it as classic as possible. All right, and then we're adding some of that good old Bahamian kunk to we're, it. We're adding kunk to it because I wanted to make it, you know, as local as possible. Nice, I love it. And we can find kunk everywhere, yeah. so. So where do we start? So we're gonna start off with the flour and the butter. Okay. Get this on for you. Oh, got it. Mm -hmm. Look at you. So what we're gonna do is create a roux. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add some of this flour and some of the butter. Okay. How much? My hand a little heavy, so. Use about half of the flour, the, the butter inside there. So that's good or more? Yes, that's good. Okay. So tell us what a roux is exactly. So a roux is a thickening agent. Again, this is another one of the French inventions, you know. Mm -hmm. Is like equal parts flour and equal parts mm -hmm. butter or fat. It could be any mm -hmm. fat. It could be pork. It could be vegetable. Okay. The idea of a roux is to thicken soups or okay. sauces. So you can cook a roux to a white consistency. You can cook a roux all the way to a dark consistency. Okay. It all depends on what it is that you're actually cooking. Awesome. All right. So we have some butter in there. Yes. Yeah, so a little we have bit of. Butter. Is that enough, or should I add some more? Let me Go add ahead. a little bit more, just. Uh -huh. And we can always add. A little bit more butter, a little bit more flour. Okay. So what we're gonna do is just let this cook down a little bit. Okay. Now one of the main important things about making a roux, mm -hmm. you have to stir the pan always because Often. it's flour and it's butter. Mm -hmm. I mean, butter burns, flour burns. So mm -hmm. if we don't stir it constantly, what's gonna happen is the flour directly on the pan will burn and your top will be white and you won't be able to use it. It'll be It'll taste bad. No good. Okay. No. So, <laughs> so, so we're yeah. making our roux, you guys. A little bit of flour, a little bit of butter. And we're just gonna let this, like you said, just cook down a little bit, but constantly stirring because you don't want it. We don't to want burn. it to burn, and we want to keep it all cooking at the same consistency mm -hmm. and the same texture, so it should all brown or tan mm -hmm. at the same time. Okay. Is this one of like your favorite dishes to make? I love making soups, to be honest with really? you. Like, yeah. And it's fall, it's getting a little cooler. I feel a little yes. um, cold front moving through, so soups are perfect Soups are for right perfect now. for right now. And I think this soup should be nice, you know? Like mm -hmm. if you're at home and you're gonna make this, like this would be a holiday hit. Nice, very fall and Christmassy. All right, so our roux is coming to life, I can see. It's yes. getting that tan color that he spoke about. It's all now becoming one consistency. Yeah, so as you see, I'm constantly stirring mm -hmm. it. Like, the, if you walk away from this roux, like, you're gonna be in problems. <laughs> yeah, this ain't them kind of dishware. You no. could go to the kitchen, take a call, and then come back, or no. it'll be gone. <laughs> it will be gone. You'd have to start over. <laughs> so as you see, you see how the way it looks now? Mm -hmm. It's nice and it's creamy. It's very buttery. Yes. I love that about any soup that I'm eating. Well, most soups, especially a bisque, I love the butter smell, you know, that butter taste. So. Yes. So it's coming together now. Now, when this reached the right color. What is the right color? How do we know? Like, well, for this soup, I'm making a bit. So we're looking at orange. Okay. And red. Okay. So I don't want the roux to be white or too tan. Mm. So I'm going to get it. I don't want it brown either. So I'm going to get it just a little golden. Okay, got you. Okay, so our roux still going here. 
So what, how else can we make it? I know you said there are different ways that you can make a fist. What else could we add to this to kind of give it some flair, a little bit more life sometimes? Well, usually, Lobster is the most famous bisque. Everybody wants a lobster bisque. Love That's it. like the prize soup <laughs> in French history, so I think. So why are you bring me lobster today? <laughs> why? That's fine. I, I could go for some good coke. <laughs> it was too early. It was too cold. The fishermen told me, hey, look here. We ain't going out there for that lobster right now. <laughs> so conk it is. Conk it is. <laughs> well, that's fine, guys. Our bisque, um, Yes, our you roux. see it's starting to cook now. Yes. I see that golden yes. brown color that you're talking about. And it's going to happen pretty fast. I'm glad that you're here to give me a hand. So when I tell you when, we're going to pop the onions and right. the celery and the carrot in here one time. All right. Do you need me to turn the stove down a little? Oh, that's fine. No, I, I, I will turn it okay. down. But you, you, you definitely, the stove will turn down because we don't want it to cook. Once it reaches the right color, mm -hmm. we want to turn it down lower okay. so it doesn't continue. Perfect. All right, and chefs, and all, what do you love most about cooking or being a chef? The most uh, people. I love uh -huh. being able to feed people. Like that's like the most. That's my <laughs> thing. Like I'm si I'm secretly like in the back looking. Like, <laughs> like how they react to the food, the plate clean or not? You know, <laughs> it's the sure fork that... going slow, is it? <laughs> So it's the first bite and the second bite that I'm most concerned oh, with. Oh gee, now you, now you put pressure on me as as a as an eater. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, guys, our roux is bubbling. We're good to go. This is Chef It Up. We'll be right back, you guys. We will show you how we will complete this tomato pumpkin bisque. Of course, with a little bit of coke. This episode is brought to you by Ronzoni and Blue Ribbon, available at all local stores. Welcome back to Chef It Up, everyone. Our roux is done, but now we're gonna get into the nuts and bolts of the ingredients and what we have here today. So what are we, what are we cooking with today? Okay, so we've made the roux. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is, as you see, we have carrots, onions, and celery. Mm -hmm. Now, the French have decided, and cooking world have decided, this is like the trinity of the vegetables. And what's this called again? Uh, Merpois. Yeah, I remember. Merpois. <laughs> so it's a merpois. These three ingredients can be used in just about every savory dish that you're gonna make. If you start off with this, you're gonna have to use less ingredients, which is perfect for us, oh, right? Oh, great, yeah. So, so that's the onions, the carrots, and the celery. Mm -hmm. Next, we're gonna move on to the spices. Mm -hmm. Now. Firstly, this. Is this. It's a Cajun spice. Oh, that smells so good. Yes. Um, the reason why I like Cajun, I chose a Cajun because Cajun has so many different herbs in the spice. The garlic, mm -hmm. the pimentos, the allspice. Like all of this stuff helps brings out the flavor of dishes, especially like in vegetable dishes, yes. like the pumpkin and the tomatoes. So it will help enhance it and give it, give it that because this this dish doesn't have a lot of meat in it. It's a seafood dish, you know? Mm -hmm. So the flavor is definitely wanting to come out of itself. I love Cajun and spicy food, so that sounds good so to me. So now for the spice, we're gonna use cayenne pepper. Ah. So we're gonna use our heat with the cayenne pepper. And just, and again, if you know cayenne pepper, cayenne could be really pungent, it can really hit you. So you have to be careful when you're using the cayenne, especially in soups, because it, it will stretch. It will yeah. stretch, <laughs> it will be everywhere. I have cinnamon as well. Cinnamon. Cinnamon and pumpkin go great cinnamon together. Cinnamon and pumpkin so go this. great together. Cinnamon and bisques go great together as well. Mm. It's, it's that nice aromatic flavor, you know, as you're eating it and you want to breathe yes. and it's like, oh yes, I'm and eating again, a bisque. Playing off of fall. I love fall. I love all things pumpkin the and smell. spice and cinnamons yes. and nutmeg, so that works great for me. Great. Um, now I have some sesame and rosemary mixture over here. Mm -hmm. This doesn't go into the soup, but what I'm doing when I make the soup, I'm gonna serve a little um, sesame and rosemary croissant. Ooh. So that's gonna be like the little bread on the side to that make it so good. to make it all well. Um, we have tomatoes. What kind of tomatoes are we using? These are Roma tomatoes or mm -hmm. plum tomatoes. Um, we can find these all year round. They're they're everywhere. It doesn't matter. Pumpkin, tomatoes, onions, uh -huh. those types of stuff available. And do you annually. source any of your ingredients locally? Yes. Most of my ingredients I try to source locally. Mm -hmm. Like the pumpkins, we grow pumpkins all the time. So I try and find the best pumpkin grower. Sometimes the super, the food stores might carry it, but <laughs> who knows? Yeah. And then your good old Doc Kunk. Doc Kunk. <laughs> well, I mean, you can't get any better than Doc Kunk, you know? And what do we have here? Is this a broth? Or? This is a broth. Uh -huh. I have a chicken broth that okay. I'm going to use as a base. And I know there are other types of broth, so could we substitute like vegetables? Now, if, right, so it's a seafood dish, so if you don't eat meat, you can definitely use a vegetable broth. Uh -huh. 
Sometimes I just take fish bones and use, boil it, you know, really? take fish bones. Like, okay, if I'm making like a boiled fish, mm -hmm. you know, like just like how we take the head and we make that, right? So sometimes I just take the head, pop it in the pan, put some onion skin, some carrots, some celery, cook that up and save that just for when oh, I'm nice. making soup. And those are the things that we tend to throw away. Yeah, we throw that we can away. We actually keep and use. All the time. For other dishes yes. and stuff. Okay, perfect. All right, you guys. So our ingredients are good to go. Let's go again. We got some chicken broth. Chicken broth. Um, our mirepoix, our mirepoix, which is the, the cabbage, the onions, and the carrot. Celery, onion, and carrot. It's okay. It's <laughs> cabbage, the, really. It's the trinity. <laughs> the celery, onion, and the carrots. And then we have our spices here. We have some Cajun, Cajun. a little bit of cayenne, cayenne. pepper. Um, what was this again? Cinnamon. Cinnamon. The sesame with the rosemary. Yes. A little bit of salt, of course. Yes, and the sea salt is also from Ragged Island. Ooh, look yes. at that. Some good old Bahamian Ragged Island salt. Ragged Island salt. Is sea salt better than just your regular fine salt? Why are you using this one? Um, the fine salt is very um, refined. So what happens is a little bit of the fine salt goes much further than the sea salt. Ah. So when I'm using the sea salt, I tend to not be able to oversalt my product. Oh, okay, a little chef yes. trick there. Yes. All right, you guys, so our ingredients are ready to go. Our roux is sitting here. This is Chef It Up. We'll be right back with some cooking with Chef Donaldo Bain. This episode is brought to you by Ronzoni and Blue Ribbon, available at all local stores. Welcome back to Chef It Up, everyone. It is time to cook our tomato pumpkin bisque with kunk. Yes. So where do we start? So we got our roux going earlier, you guys, going. as you know. Where do we go from there? So what we're going to do next is we're going to add the onions, the carrots, and the celery. Okay. So like I said, remember, we're just going to make sure the roux is looking good. We don't want to burn anything. Uh -huh. It's a right color. It's the right consistency. So at Perfect. this point, we can definitely start to add. Okay. Onions, so I'm gonna add all of this onions. This is like a quarter cup of onions. A quarter cup add. of onions, a quarter cup of carrots, and a quarter cup of celery. Okay, perfect. All right. Yes. So, like I said, I, so I turned the, the, um, the heat down because I don't want the roux to, to get any darker mm -hmm. than it is already. What I want oh. is for the onions and the celery and the carrots to cook till it gets translucent. I'm gonna also add the conch into this. The aroma, you guys, and here smells so good. You come back on the side. All right. <laughs> yeah, you come back on the side. I just wanted to mix. In here smells so good, you guys. So Let's scrape out some of this because we don't wanna- In the pot, waste no conch. No, we don't wanna waste any conch. <laughs> in the pot with our roux, we added in our mirepoix, which is the carrots, the onions, and the celery. And then he yeah, tossed in- Yeah, let me grab in, this one. He so, tossed in our conch. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I wanna separate. I don't want it to be clumps and clumps and pieces of it. So I wanna get it all separated so that, again, we want everything to cook evenly okay, and consistently perfect. at the same time. If we start to cook conk and the bottom is getting cooked and the top is not getting cooked, mm -hmm. we're gonna end up with a product that might not be what we want, you okay, know? Okay, good. So. And hair smells so good, like, whew. And hair smells really good already. So I can add, so at this point, I have a little bit of oil here. Okay, I just what kind of oil are we using? I'm just using some vegetable oil. Okay. You can use olive oil. I find that olive oil in this dish, olive oil has a, has a natural flavor. So if you don't mm. want to, your food to taste like olive oil, a vegetable oil is okay. quite fine. perfect. So mixing in, you guys, I'm a little bit of vegetable oil in with our carrots, yes. our celery, our onions, the conch, and of course, that roux that we made a little earlier. So yes. just mix this around a little. Now this this process here, I would say we'd cook this for about three to five minutes. Okay. Like I said, we just want to get the onions translucent. Mm -hmm. We want the conch to also become a little translucent. Okay. So it comes from a solid white to like a yellowy, mm. you can't see through it, but you know. And I can see how that roux is binding all of this together. So that yes. binding agent that we made earlier, everything's starting to look like like it's married. <laughs> right, exactly. You could probably take this and shape it into yes. a little patty and yes. bread it with some panko bread and you can have a conch exactly. patty on a sandwich if you Perfect. want it. Perfect. All right. All right, so you can hear this, this part getting yes, fried. Sizzling so again, a remember, bit. like I say, as soon as you start to hear things sizzling and crackling, mm -hmm. You want to turn the stove down because that's not what we want at this point. People we just, love to hear that though. They feel like if the pot is sizzling and they can hear the food crackling, oh yeah, cooking good. Well, I mean, <laughs> <But> not really. <laughs> not every not every dish is a uh -huh. fried dish. Ah, uh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so we turned our stove down so to I, like medium low heat. To kinda. medium low heat, mm -hmm. yes. What I want to do at this point is I want to get my 
onions, I mean my pumpkin uh -huh. and my tomatoes blended together. Okay. So let's take this right over here. And if you want to bring some of that, you can continuously mix okay. that. So Just I will make mix sure this. it doesn't. All right. This smells so good. I feel like eating this right now. <laughs> so while I'm mixing um, our conch, the mirepoix, and the roux, chef is going to blend up those pumpkins and tomatoes. Pumpkins and tomatoes, because this needs to go into the dish next. This is the okay. next thing that needs to go into the pot. And it's so easy to make this fish, though. It sounds like such a complicated dish to make, but like literally we're like speeding through this air. Look, so cooking, you're putting the, uh-huh? I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a little bit of chicken broth inside here because I don't want the blender to burn out. So just okay. a little bit of liquid to get it going. Okay, good. Nothing too. Yeah, I was saying how easy we're running through this dish. Yeah, you know, the reason why we're running through it very easily too, because we had a prep, you know, like, when you have all your things together, cook exactly. time is cook time. Usually, a lot of the cooking is prep. So when people say, oh, I spend two hours yes. in the kitchen, they literally <laughs> spend an hour and a half cutting vegetables, cleaning meat, making things happen. But the cooking usually takes 30 to 45 yeah. minutes. And I think that's something we don't do. Right. Prep. I don't want to... As chef gets our blender going there, you can see the pumpkin already. Pumpkin's already starting to. I might need to add a little bit more of the the broth. A little bit of broth to kind of give it some yeah. liquid to move around a bit. To move around, or else we can All have right. a problem. Okay, so you're done blending. Yes, the I'm done blending the pumpkin and tomatoes. Uh -huh. What I'm gonna do at this point now is. Okay. Pour this directly nice. into here. As you can see, it's nice and blended. I blended it together to save time, and it's all going in the same place. So Nice and orange, that nice fall color. Oh, this is a beautiful it's color. so hearty, it's thick. It smells really good. Awesome. All right. So we're so, gonna mix all that in. So. Yeah, so at this point, like, see, like I'm just trying to make everything come together. Mm -hmm. Mix it in, you know, like consistency is the yeah. key when you're making soup. I mean, you can't just pour ingredients in because the bottom of the pot is cooking, the top of the pot's not. Yeah. So nobody wants a lumpy soup, unless, of course, my lumps are meat, conch, exactly. fish, steak. Yes, I love it. <laughs> so, you guys, just again, our tomato pumpkin bisque, we got that going. As you can see, he blended together the pumpkins, um, those tomatoes, and then we just poured everything into the pot, yes. adding now a little bit more of that Yes, I'm gonna, vegetable. I'm gonna add the rest of the vegetable broth. Mm. I used two cups of vegetable broth in this dish. Okay, perfect. Now with the pumpkin, did you do any prep for those prior to? Did you boil them? Yes, so okay. before I cooked the pumpkins, I diced them up, boiled them, got them nice and soft. Okay. And the tomatoes, I also boiled them a little bit just so I can peel the skin ah. off of it because I don't want to, I don't want to have skin yeah. inside the soup. Uh -huh. I mean, it's okay to have skin in the soup, but you know, I want my soup to be somewhat fancy, nice. right? Nice. <laughs> Awesome, okay. So yeah, so I added the broth. I'm gonna add now also a little bit of milk. If you want to, you can pour some of that in. Try getting half in it first. And what kind of milk are we using? This is whole milk. Now, in a okay. lot of, yes, in a lot of recipes nowadays, they usually ask you to add heavy cream yeah. or some sort of cream at the end of it. Okay. You know, and, and, and that's, that's cool and fine and dandy. It saves you time but not everybody's gonna have access to heavy cream and it could be quite expensive it in the store. It is very expensive, like $9 for like yeah. um, so, a quart or something right. like that. Right, so it's important that you follow this recipe as it is mm -hmm. with the roux. The roux and the whole milk together will give you a better product than heavy cream. And what I like about this dish is that it seems very affordable and inexpensive to make. We're using regular ingredients that yes. you can find every day, every day in the store. Like uh -huh. everybody has these ingredients. Yeah, the and conch. The conch, everybody has conch. Like, now, conch has been kind of iffy in the Bahamas lately just because, you know, they said that we'd be depleted. They had this whole conservation project going on. Yeah. So. Well, you know, like, we just have to stop yeah. abusing it. That's exactly. all it is. Exactly. 
Exactly, and get it and use it for dishes like this. Yes. <laughs> don't just don't just abuse our cow. Right. So I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. Perfect. And ah, tiny. Ah, now to our spices. Yes. I was waiting on these. A tiny bit of cayenne. Then a little bit of that Cajun. I'm gonna put a little bit more of the Cajun. Ooh. And even a tinier bit of the cinnamon. cinnamon. I just again, cinnamon is a very strong, strong it dish. It is. So I just want to get very delicate, but yes, strong. Yes, yes. I just want to get a tiny little pinch. You mightn't even see it go in there. Yeah. That little bit goes a long way. Perfect. Okay. All right, you guys. So our tomato pumpkin biscuits going. We put all of our ingredients in there. Yes. We're gonna let this simmer down for a little bit, and I think Chef has a surprise for us after this, right? Yes, we'll I do. Be right back. This is Chef It Up. This episode is brought to you by Ronzoni and Blue Ribbon, available at all local stores. Welcome back to Chef It Up, everyone. Our tomato pumpkin bisque with yes. conch is done, and Chef has prepared a little surprise. What do we have there? Yes, yeah, so what I did was I made a little bit of, like I guess like a little mini croissant. Ooh. So I, it's a little bit of sesame seed and um, rosemary rolled up in it, you know, give it a little extra nice. layers of flavor. It's a real French today. Yes. So can I, can I get a bowl of this little pumpkin bisque, well, please? Most definitely. <laughs> and just to remind you guys what we did early, of course, we made our roux with some flour and some butter, and then we tossed in our mirepoix, which yes. is the um, celery, <laughs> onions, and carrots. Boom. We mix that all together, and then we uh, blended our pumpkin and tomato, poured that all into the pan with the conch, and just let that simmer down. For like, how long was that simmering? About 20 minutes. About 20 minutes or so, so. On low. Okay, you wanna try? Oh, definitely. Do you usually eat your own food? I know a lot of chefs don't. Yeah. You do? I often. <laughs> so let's go in with our bisque here. Mmm, that is really good. Thank you. Flavor to perfection. I could taste the conch. I haven't tasted the conch yet, but that flavor is just all throughout this dish. The cinnamon, those spices, um, the cayenne and the Cajun pepper that we used. Yes. All throughout. Very fall, very comforting. I could eat this any day after work. And don't let it be ringing, because I can go in. <laughs> Look, this, a piece of bread, mm -hmm. and a nice salad mm -hmm. is dinner. Really good. And these are so flaky and so crispy, so... And we can easily find... Um, we can easily find the croissant. What do we use to make these again? The puff, puff pastry? pastry? I just used the puff pastry to make this croissant. Uh-huh, perfect, you guys. All right. Mmm, it's really good. So our tomato pumpkin biscuit, you guys, try this at home, Chef Donaldo. Where can they find you? You do uh, private um, chef as well, right? Yes, I do private catering. Mm. Um, you can find me on my website, through my website. It's www.foodu.today. All right, thank you guys so much. This has been Chef It Up. We'll see you next time.